Welcome back to City Online. Timothy McVeigh has been put to death by the U.S. government that he blames for his unspeakable act of madness that killed 168 innocent people in 1995. Capital punishment is our focus today, and we're joined with by Dave Parkinson with the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty, and he's here to take your calls. And, Bill, are you there? Yes, I am. Thanks for calling. What do you think, Bill? Um, I disagree with the death penalty. I think they should be put to work in hard labor, say, um, sentenced for life for hard labor. I mean, really physical hard labor. You know, um, building roads, sort of like the states, how they have their road crews, mm -hmm. or even more physical labor. I think it's just, uh, prison system is a bit easier on them. They have choice of chunky or smooth peanut butter, things like that. I mean, yep. it's ridiculous. They should have the minimum food, not starvation, but the minimum food, and not gourmet, and um, this is for breakfast, this is for lunch, this is for dinner, that's it. And then you go to work every day. You get up in the morning at 6, come back home at 9, or whatever, and you get them to do it for the rest of your life. I think that's how it should be. You know, we're talking about this whole notion of the club fed uh, mm -hmm. perception that so many people have of our federal system. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, this is a, a point that uh, Bill's just uh, touching on here. This is what people feel. Well, there is uh, actually a group in the in the uh, in the states uh, restitution org, which does exactly what Bill's saying. Uh, works with uh, inmates who um, have committed uh, crimes that have uh, garnered them life sentences, some death sentences, and works with them to provide restitution for the victims' families um, and in the communities in which we're affected. Uh, and obviously, if a person has been put to death, they're they're in no position to be able to provide any restitution or any work uh, to try and bring uh, something back to the community that has been affected by the crime that they've committed. Yeah. Bill, thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Thank you. Tracy, are you there? Yes, I am, Dave. Tracy, I, I understand this uh, issue touches you very directly. Uh, yes, it does. I attended the second annual commemoration service for victims of crime yesterday. Mm -hmm. My daughter, Christy Christie, was murdered uh, five years ago, premeditated right. murder. Mm -hmm. We remember and the story well. Yes, I, I'm definitely for the... Uh, death penalty. You see, the thing that, that people don't understand is there will never be a closure for victims. What I would get if, I, if the fellow that murdered my daughter was to be executed would be satisfaction. There will never be a closure. And Dave Parkinson, I really wish that you were there yesterday to feel the pain that we have to suffer with every day through senseless acts of crime. Um, well, I, w I would like to say that actually um, uh, a friend of mine several years ago uh, was also murdered. Uh, quite brutal murder, actually, found in a dumpster outside of the city, uh, beaten beyond recognition and stabbed numerous times to death. Um, from what I understand, uh, two individuals who actually committed this murder have been released since then. Uh, they were given uh, well, less than 10 year sentences. I think they would got maybe six years and then out with good behavior. And uh, again, this is the problem with the justice system. This is, yeah. the, this is the problem. Now, I don't want to see these individuals executed. Uh, as a matter of fact, the person I know who was killed was also against the death penalty. Um, but the fact of the matter remains uh, that uh, for me to see anything bad happen to these individuals, again, it's just revenge. It's vengeance against these people. And uh, I mean, our hearts go out to her and, and to other people who, who have been victims of violent crime. Um, I know other individuals personally who have been victims of violent crime and who are also against capital punishment. But what we need to understand, as you said, there is no closure. And uh, by uh, having a violent act uh, happen against the individual that did this, it may give us a certain degree of satisfaction to know, good, we got them back. But the mm -hmm. fact of the matter is there is not going to be any closure. It's not going to bring our loved ones back. And it doesn't protect society any more than having this individual locked away for good uh, and having the key thrown away. Um, and uh, again, there are many groups out there who um, work with victims um, who are anti-death penalty. Uh, many groups in the states who are pro-death penalty usually will take a victim and they'll put them up on a soapbox uh, to spew anger and rhetoric and promote their political cause and giving the victim um, the illusion that this is somehow going to bring closure. And as uh, she had just said, there is no closure yeah. in this instance. And taking the life of the individual or locking them up and throwing away the key, either way, we're not going to find closure. But we do need to move on with our lives, and we do need to address um, uh, the pain, the pain yes. that, that people feel. And as I said, I, 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 mean, I know people who who have been victims of violent crime, and I don't think that justice was served in their cases either, but in no way would I condone going out and committing a violent act against the person who did it. Tracy, uh, we, th we thank you for uh, calling and uh, sharing your story with us. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, David. Pat, are you there? 
Yeah, I'm here, David. Hi, How Pat. are you? Very well. What do you think? Uh, I agree with most of the callers. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I agree with the death penalty. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think he got what he actually deserved. Mm -hmm. He was dead in a couple of minutes, and these people are still suffering. And it, it's a shame. I really agree with the death penalty. I disagree with what Dave's saying altogether. Okay. Pat, thanks so very much for calling. Thank you. Uh, Dave, it's a, a very controversial topic, to say mm -hmm. the very least, and uh, we're, we're not going to uh, resolve it here, but uh, we thank you for being with us and uh, um, sharing your insights. Thanks for having me on, and I, I would definitely encourage your viewers to uh, check out our website at ccadp.org and uh, to see some of the faces and cases of the real individuals who've been sentenced to death by the United States government. Okay, thanks very much. It's time to check our final phone poll results. The question is this. Do you support the death penalty? Let's take a look at the final numbers. 676 say yes, 339 say no. As we always say, it is not a scientific poll, but it does reflect the people that called us on the line and spoke with us today. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. Our thanks, of course, to all of our callers and Dave Parkinson for joining us. Don't forget, you can interact with us at any time by logging on to our City Pulse website at pulse24.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great afternoon. Up next, the original Zucker Brothers disaster movie spoof, Robert Stack, a drunken veteran who's the only one who can land a plane on which everyone, everyone is suffering from food poisoning. At least everyone flying coach. Oh, Uncle, airplane is next on Great Movies on City.